In this tutorial, I will show you how to make your own cake mapping guide in a free graphics editing application called GIMP. I will show you how to take the dimensions of the cake you intend to use for cake mapping with any number of tiers and create a helpful guide that you can then bring into your mapping software. When I projection map a cake, I usually work with a five tier cake. Each tier has a square base and is five inches high. I start with an eight inch base tier at the top. The bases get larger in two inch increments as you go down the cake. That's 10 inches, 12 inches, 14 inches, finishing with 16 inches at the bottom. I make a guide for this size cake freely available to those following my tutorials who want to work with the same sized cake as me. I've included a link in the description to a page where you can download it. However, you may want to work with a cake that's a different size to mine. It might have taller tiers or wider tiers, perhaps it's six tiers instead of five. This tutorial will walk you through how to make a guide of your own based on the dimensions of the cake you intend to use. This guide will be useful when it comes to setting up your input mapping in your projection mapping software of choice, be it in MapMap, MadMapper, Resolume or others. But it will also be useful if you are intending to add text onto your cake. See a tutorial on how to achieve this by clicking the card. We will be making our guide using GIMP, which is a free open source graphics editing application. It can be downloaded from GIMP's website, making it possible for you to follow these steps and create your own cake mapping guide step by step without parting with any money. I would usually use Photoshop to do all my image and graphics editing, but GIMP will provide us with everything we need for this task without commanding the same price tag. First, open up GIMP. Go to File new, and set the image size of your choice. I will set width as 2048 and height as 2048, and my units are in pixels. Why these dimensions? I've made it square because my cake surfaces, when laid out in a straightforward way, comfortably fit inside and there is no point including empty space either side that contains no content. I'll be projecting with a single Full HD projector with an output of 1920 by 1080. What this means is that its output has 1920 pixels across its width horizontally and 1080 pixels down its height vertically. Now 2048 by 2048 is actually larger than I need for my purposes. When I create assets for this layout of the cake, I tend to use 2048 by 2048 in case I later want to use two projectors and then I'd have enough pixels to work with. I can always resize all these assets down to something like 1080 by 1080 if necessary. Click OK. In order to make your own guide, you will need to know the dimensions of your cake tiers. If you are making a cake out of dummy tiers, you will know their dimensions from their product pages or from what's listed on their label or description. If you have physical access to the cake tiers, simply measure them with a tape measure. If someone else is making your cake for you, ask them for the dimensions and make a note of them. We are going to create solid rectangle shapes to represent individual tiers, each with the same proportions as their real life counterparts. Before we begin, set your foreground color to something distinctive like red by clicking and dragging inside this color window. I'm going to make a separate layer for each one of my tiers. So I want to create a new layer by clicking this sheet of paper icon at the bottom left of the layers panel. I'll call it one, which will be the top tier. I know that for me, this tier is five inches high and eight inches wide. I want to give my new layer the same proportions. By default, the units are set to pixels. You could select any of these units, it doesn't matter. What matters is the ratio between the width to height. Whether you mark out eight by five pixels, eight by five inches or eight by five meters, the proportions of the rectangle will be the same. 
Similarly, if you multiply the values of the width and the height by 10 or even 100, the proportions are still the same. So I'll make this layer 800 pixels wide and 500 pixels high. Remember, if your cake is a different size, these values will be different for you. For example, if your top tier is 6 inches wide and 5 inches high, you would enter 600 pixels by 500 pixels. You could fill with some kind of pattern. I find square checker grids can be helpful to line up the tiers and detect if any stretching is taking place. But for now, let's just fill with foreground colour. Now I have a large red rectangle with the proportions of my top tier of cake. Now do the same for every tier, working your way down from the top. Create another new layer and instead call this one 2. This tier in real life for my cake is 10 inches wide and 8 inches high. So I'll give it 1000 pixels width and 500 pixels height. Fill with foreground colour again. 3 will be 1200 pixels wide by 500 for me. Four will be 1400 pixels wide by 500 high. Five will be 1600 pixels wide by 500 high. Add more layers if you are cake mapping more than five tiers. So you can see everything. You can zoom in or out to suit your needs. Do this by going to view, zoom, zoom in or out, or by using the shortcuts plus and minus on your keyboard. You can pan around the canvas by using the shortcut M for move, holding down the spacebar and clicking and dragging around the window. These layers are all too large for my canvas, so I want to scale them down uniformly by the same amount. I do this by activating this linked chain icon to the right of the eyeball in the layers panel for each of the layers. This chains the layers to one another and any transformation, like scale, that is applied to one layer will apply to them all. With five selected, scale the layers by coming up to Tools, Transform Tools, Scale, or use the shortcut Shift S. Hold shift while you drag on the corner of the rectangle. This will lock the proportions and stop you squashing or stretching the shapes you just carefully measured out. Drag until five is just under half the width of the canvas. Apply the transformation by hitting scale. Unlock one. Select two. By going to tools, transform tools, move, or by using the shortcut M, move two underneath one. It will bring the linked layers with it. You can make fine adjustments using the arrow keys. You can be more precise than me at this stage. Unlock two, now select three and move it below two, taking the linked layers above with it. Repeat for four, not forgetting to unlink three before you do so. Lastly, unlink 4 and move 5. Now select the Align tool. Select all the rectangles by clicking each one whilst holding Shift. Open the Tools Option dialog tab. Ensure Align is set relative to image. Hit Align right edge to target. Make a new layer group by hitting this folder icon at the bottom of the layers panel. Place all the layers inside. 
Do this by dragging each layer and hovering it over the layer group until it gets a grey dotted outline and then releasing it. Rename the layer group left. Right click the new layer group and select duplicate layer. Rename it right. With the right layer group selected, go to Tools, Transform Tools, Flip. Click on the layer group to flip it. You can collapse these layer groups for tidiness by hitting this minus symbol. Now let's move these left and right layer groups so that they are more central in the canvas and more importantly, they line up next to one another. Hit M. Go to the Tool Options dialog tab and change the option from Pick the Layer or Guide to Move the Active Layer. Now select the right layer group and move it centrally. Do the same for the left layer group, so left and right are now adjacent to one another. Make another layer group. If it gets created inside one of your pre-existing layer groups, drag it out and to the top of the stack until you see a grey line, then release it. Drag the left and right groups inside. Name it Solid Shapes. Move and scale them so they fit comfortably inside the canvas. Create a new layer and call it Outline and fill it with transparency. Drag it to the top of the stack of layers. Change the foreground colour to black. Open up the left and right layer groups. Right click on a layer and select Alpha to Selection. Select the outline layer, then go to Edit, Stroke Selection, and hit Stroke to add a black outline around the tier. Do this for all the tiers. Go to Select, None to deselect everything. You will be left with one layer that contains all the black outlines and a layer group that contains all the solid rectangle shapes. You could turn down the opacity of these solid shapes by dragging the opacity slider above the layers panel. Or you could turn off its visibility completely. Save your project. And then export your guide. You can now use this guide to set up your input surfaces in the projection mapping software of your choice. MapMap is a free mapping application. I've included a link to where you can download this software in the description. Some of the steps coming up are specific to Mac users, but Windows users can still follow the general principles behind what I'm doing and how I'm using the guide we just made in the projection mapping process. Import your guide by hitting the piece of film and navigating to the guide you just made in GIMP. Then add your first surface by clicking the rectangle. Using the corner handles, move the mesh so it fits around the top left tier in the input editor.
Do the same for all the tiers, giving the meshes sensible names as you go. When you have finished setting up all the input meshes, in the output editor, move the corner points of the meshes to the corners of the corresponding tiers of your cake. Now click the film icon again and bring in the video content you want to put on the cake. For each of these meshes, change the source from your guide to your video content. I sell some non-size specific animations for cake mapping in my online shop, which you can use for cakes of any dimensions. Keep checking in because I'll be adding many more in the future. What size cake are you planning on mapping and why? Do you have any questions? Let us know in the comments down below. If this video helped you, please hit that like button. Hit subscribe to stay up to date with more cake mapping and projection mapping tutorials and videos.